Okay, so let me, uh, I just wanted to make one short comment on complete the degree that uh, Dave was talking about. So just, just make sure you finish. Um, so we kind of have the perception that if we think about our education that um, over time, our four years or whatever, if it's, uh, five years or whatever, we, 15 credit hours, if we think about our knowledge base, maybe it kind of goes up like this, right? But if we now take that uh, look, and instead of doing knowledge, just keep the fat one, let's talk green here, we measure uh, income, and this is graduation, right? So this is year four here. If we now measure income paths, and, and economists have studied this, it looks like this. Right, so you go to two years of school, the market doesn't reward you for that. You go to three years of school, the market doesn't really reward you for that. Even though you've accumulated knowledge in kind of a linear fashion over time, over your four years, what do they reward for? You got your degree. So your income jumps. You need to complete your degree. Um, not just think, oh, I'll just get one more semester or what, you know, whatever. Um, the accumulation, there's lots of ways to accumulate useful knowledge in a much cheaper way compared to a four-year degree if you're just looking to do a couple years, which is great. And, and there's a lot of people in trade schools and stuff that, that can start out at higher pay than what some of our four-year graduates go. So it's something to be uh, thinking about. Um, all right, so everybody blow up these paper. We're going to turn this into some points today. We need to start reflecting on our majors. <laughs> so I want you to write your first, um, it's really the discussion question here, number one. Um, you know, why did you pick your particular major, whatever you're, whatever you're picking? Or if you're undecided, you can talk about that. So I've got a few of my pencil marks here, but what are your reasons for pursuing a particular major? Uh, you don't even have to, this, this part about how is this chapter being for, we haven't even started the chapter really. So all I want you to do is uh, write down what your major is, or if you're undecided, and then talk about why you picked it. That's all I want you to do. And if you're undecided, you can talk about maybe some other things, but why, why are you undecided? And Julio, do you have your um, video available? If you attend via Zoom, you got to keep your video on. And you can write down your answers here on paper, and then you need to um, submit them to me uh, handwritten. You take a picture of it and send it to me. And then I want you to add just a single number, and I'm going to come around the room um, and have you kind of tell everybody what you think your starting pay was, was going to be. So if you don't have a clue, you don't have a clue. Just put down a number. I want everybody to have a number down of what you think your starting pay will be for your first job. And you can you can fall apart. Um, I will tell you if you're if you're making a $10 an hour, there's about 2,080 working hours in a given year. So just if you remember that, $10 times 2,000 is about 20,000 bucks. If you're thinking in hourly terms, if that helps, basically multiply it times two. Um, and that'll kind of roughly ballpark what your annual pay. But I want everybody to give your annual pay. So starting pay, this is annual yearly income. And I'll put that formula down. Hourly pay times 12,080. I don't want to pull out calculators. You basically just multiply times two uh, equals annual, or approximately equals annual. It's kind of a good ballpark way to think about that. So somebody making $15 an hour is roughly 30,000 a year, right? So it's just kind of easy way to look at it. All right, everybody got their number down. I'm going to go around the room. And I want you to give me just your major and starting pay. 
annual starting pay. So, right? Uh, 40. Uh, secondary ed, 35. 35. Okay, Psychology, 6. Human resources, 65. 61. Okay. I did psychology and 30. 30? So I did accounting and I did like 40. Okay. Um, just administration. 25 to 30. Okay. 30. Okay. Human services and sociology, 40. Okay. Undecided 70. That's optimism there. Marketing 60. Marketing 60. Okay. Did I do it again? Yeah. Okay. But this is management 45,000. Marketing what? 80. Okay. And Julio. Mathematics uh, 60,000. Mathematics 60,000. Okay. So um, the next thing we're going to do is look at some real data on what it is. So all I did here was Google what do majors pay. For the first time, it brought up like the US Army and stuff, like the major in the Army, like how much they make. Usually, it's at the top of the list. But this is the site's called payscale.com. And uh, they gather annual data on majors. And so these are the top five bachelor's degrees. And if you view all majors, it brings you to this nice little spreadsheet. And so right now they've got the spreadsheet. Let me get this a little bigger for you guys. Uh, maybe not that big. There we go. How about that? So petroleum engineers have been at the top for a while. Mid-career pay 182, starting pay 92. So we've got uh, electrical engineering. Oh, applied economics. Hey, economics looks pretty good here. 139. Now notice with economics, starting pay 60, mid-career pay 139. So you can kind of start to see what's going to happen over time. Am I going to stay fairly flat, or is it going to go up? Is part of what's nice about looking at this stuff, too. And let me go by early career pay here. So now this is sorted by early career pay. We got operations management, a lot of engineering up at the top. So engineers around that 70,000 range. Uh, let's see, then we get uh, still engineering. This is gonna be engineering for a little while. They got every major known to man too. Uh, pharmacy, radiation therapy. Now these are all four years. I'm not going to go through all 34 columns. In fact, we're going to jump to 34 here in a second. So statistics, a lot of quantitative. You guys have heard of the STEM areas, right? So science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, and so all of that stuff is kind of there. So let's jump to the bottom here. This is the last one. So developmental psychology, uh, start at 30. Uh, Mid-career of 62, child studies, so a lot of the humanities, um, working our way up this way, Christian ministry, 3552, so kind of there's your 30s ranges. And so now, let me choose some majors. So I, guess just, I just wanted to give you a layout of what it looks like. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. I forgot to mention the degree of meaning. So this is self-reported, um, you know, how much meaning do you get from your job? So Dave said, like, it takes more than just pay. Um, so that's kind of interesting, too. Um, some of them are higher. Some of them are, are lower. So that's one we can look at, too. So if somebody shout out a major here. What do you want me to search for? Psychology. All right. I don't know if I can spell psychology. Psychology, DSYC, there we go. <laughs> okay, so it looks like a lot of the psychologies in the 30s here, 30s up to 40s. This is annual data, by the way. So another exercise we're going to do later is looking at, you know, woohoo, I got a $60,000 job, but it's in San Francisco. And so you can probably make 40,000 in Ottawa, Kansas, and be better off than 60,000 in San Francisco, right? So we'll do that later too. So this is annual data, but they can drill down on that even further. 
Um, is there a particular area of psychology? One of these that you want me to pick? I want to show one more thing. Child psychology, counseling psychology, forensic, clinical. Somebody who is psychology, give me, give me one of them. I don't care which one. Forensic. All right, so forensic was 40. So then once you purple squirrels, not around. Okay. Sure. What's that? Press the space bar. Is that all I have to do? What, to play the game? Or yeah. Play the game? yeah. Let's see how it's what do I have to do? Jump? Jump. jump. Right, I don't know. Get the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, got that one. Oh, that's pretty crazy. All right. Cool. So, fun, fun, fun. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder if that's, this is something new that they've done. Let me do educational psychology. Oh, yeah, you got to do this. Purple squirrels are hard to find. Huh. All right. Well. All what no, maybe once you log in and establish an account, um, it'll bring you to like salary ranges in different places, and it'll kind of help you drill down like in your area, so you can keep drilling down on more information. I'm not, I haven't seen the squirrel thing before. All right, give me another major. Accounting. Accounting. All right, so 40, 50 range. So it sounds like you were right on, and then uh, this. Uh, 50 or 60s, 80, maybe if you get into doing some tax returns and stuff uh, later, which you may or may not want to do, because that doesn't seem very fun to me, but uh, I had my former business partner was our CPA and he did all of our tax stuff, um, financial accounting, so all those kinds of areas in here. <laughs> so since, uh, since you're interested in accounting, Taylor, we have some of our best placements in the job market for starting pay, and then I'm sure it translates into mid-career pay too, but they haven't been out long enough, is accounting and economics double major. And so we had a starting pay 55,000. This was even six years ago for Caitlin Thornburg. She was one of our first accounting uh, economics doubles. So that kind of helps you feel out where those where that stuff is. Um, another major. Business administration. There we go, 4981, kind of similar in there. Um, our experience from Ottawa Business Administration is probably going to be a little less starting pay than like accounting or some of the economics, the, the quantitative ones. Uh, but obviously, uh, there's lots of business administration uh, majors out there, and they do pretty well as well, pretty well too. All right, give me another one. Human resource. All right, 4480 human resources, HR here, 4471. So again, let's see if the squirrel comes up again. I don't know what this is. Oh, there we go. This is what I was looking to do. I guess this, I don't know, maybe this squirrel thing is something related to pay scale, but this is what I was looking for. So bachelor's degree, uh, show hourly rate. Uh, they give you more specifics you can kind of drill down on um, around Ottawa, Kansas. So this will be a little more specific in, in our in a particular market area, or you could put Miami, Florida, or whatever, and uh, continue to drill down on, on more information regarding it. So lots of good stuff here on pay related to different majors. Does anybody have any last questions on that? So pay is not the most important thing, but... Um, it's right up there. It's certainly something you should consider um, because there's always trade-offs uh, to be thinking about. And so some people that may be, I don't think we had any music majors, but uh, maybe you're a music major um, and you have aspirations of you know, running your own shop or doing something. Uh, you start to look at the, the pay ranges here and you're like, wow, that's not going to be the type of lifestyle I want. Maybe I can follow my music passion along with a business degree or something, right? Kind of be thinking about that. So just income is just something to, to be aware of um, as you get out into the real world. And, and certainly we're gonna show you stuff in this class that you can become a millionaire on 40,000 a year or 100,000 a year, right? So you, you, managing your money is the, is the key thing for that. All right, um, I think we're ready for our next video. Oh.
Okay, so, so we're going to do a little disc career. How many of you have done those personality type assessment deals? Maybe you did it in high school or someplace else. Um, so there's, there's a number of different ones out there. Some are more extensive than others. Um, so this one, we're trying to just do this uh, career match with it. So I'm going to be passing out a sheet. And on the first page, um, you can go through, and it's got the dominant uh, influencing and steady and compliant, and then there's a bunch of uh, behaviors there that you can just circle to see. Did everybody get one in here? Okay, Julio, you need to go on to uh, the uh, chapter four disc and career match under activities page for this. So, so for now, what I want you to do is just go down this list. And so you see uh, visionary. Oh yeah, that sounds like me, right? And just circle. So circle enjoys change, uh, infectious laughter, whatever. So anything that applies to you, just go through all of the list on all of these squares and start circling everything that, yeah, that kind of sounds like me. Yep, that's me, right? So here are the answers, so you can correct the paper if you need to. That's like a little joke of mine. This is, this is me. <laughs> so, so I went through this. <laughs> uh, so this is me. I went through, and so um, maybe got a few things down here, and then I'm pretty heavy up here. And so what I want to do next is um, have uh, everybody kind of put where they are. I'm going to pass a sheet around. I usually have kids come to the board for this, but with COVID and whatever, we'll, we'll just kind of do it this way. So I'm going to make a, a sheet and basically outline the D, I for influencing. And then we've got the steady and the compliance. So this matches this matches this. And then all I want you to do is kind of put a big fat dot. So I'm a little bit more on the dominance, but I'm also on the I. So I'm going to put I'm kind of high up here somewhere. And we're going to have the whole class put a dot on this same paper just to kind of see uh, where everybody's at. So if you were mostly a C down here, then you might put a, a fat dot. If you got your pencil or pen, just make it kind of a big dot so that we can see it easier on the on the screen. And or if you're an influencing, you're here. If you're kind of a little bit of both of these, but a little more C. Everybody understand what I'm trying to do? So if you're really strong, like you had almost nothing else in all S, then maybe your dot would go there. Any questions on that? So we're going to pass the same sheet. I'm going to start passing this around. So just go up quickly and, and put your dot. Think about where your dot is, where it belongs on this sheet. And then we'll just let this circulate through the room. You can just pass it up. Put your dot on and pass it around. No names or anything. Just going to be a page full of dots. So while the, while the page is circulating then, what you want to do is uh, go ahead and flip it over. And you know where you're at. And so for me, you know, we can kind of see doesn't match up very good. So I told you guys uh, in the dominant thing, entrepreneur, business owner, these kind of related to me. Uh, this is kind of more for fun, but home economist, I'm really, you know, I'm an economist, but that, that's kind of more for just fun with talks about that. But faculty member is down here. So, you know, for me, it kind of matched up with some uh, particular uh, jobs. And then you guys can see, does your area seem to line up with what you want to do? And we can kind of test the match here on if it looks like it's lining up. So go ahead and look over those things, and maybe you can put a little star or circle, uh, something that 
like the job that you think you want to do or that sounds interesting, go ahead and circle it and let's see if it actually matches the flip side, right? So this is, it isn't going to be perfect. There's usually people that are going to be both. Did anybody not get on the docks here? Just make your own room. Oh, you guys. I thought it looked, didn't look like enough dots. Okay, so while the sheet continues to circulate, um, let me see if uh, some of you did it. You know, did it match up? Um, let's see. Brady, give me a number between uh, three and six. One, two, three, four, five. Abby, how did yours do? Um, I can't really find what I want to do, but I guess I could. Which one did, what, well, first of all, state what you kind of want to do. Let's hear that. Uh, well, I want to work in the golf business. Golf business, so, like, okay. Side professional for some. So kind of sports management type of yeah. thing, maybe, or something? Yeah. Okay. Or is it sales, or is it, what do you think? Yeah, I'll do both. I mean, like you work in a pro shop. Like I want to work with like okay. Pirates. So something like that, you're kind of jack of all trades. Yeah. Um, with, with purchasing and some accounting and, and people come in and dealing with people. So yeah. Um, so yeah, you can try to see. If, and you were businessman. So where was your uh, dot? Um, what did you think you were that you best was, fit anyway? I mean, more uh, the S. The S. Okay. And then I have. Okay, a little bit of somewhere in between here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, with um, so then if, as we look here, you might not find stuff that matches what you think you want to do, but then this at least calls to the question. That's part of what the learning process is all about. Is like, is this the right fit for me, or is there something related to golf pro shop management that? You know, if this seems to be more of me, is there something related to that job that might be a better fit, right? So it just kind of gets you thinking. But can it be basically dead wrong? Sure it can. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of a little indicator of, of where you're at. Okay. So here is, before we do, uh, I'm going to have a couple other you share. Here's our dots. So I love doing this uh, each time because it, uh, it shows that we're all different, right? It really kind of highlights the fact. So one of the things that I think I did wrong early in life or perception that I have is that I thought everybody was uh, you know, kind of like me in terms of wanting to do investments and stuff. So we had a, a small real estate company. And so instead of a um, you know, big retirement plan, we're like, hey, let's just give some of our employees the opportunity to own an investment property, right? We'll give them a duplex. Perfect, right? Nobody took us up on it. Right, even though we were basically uh, giving them a duplex, we weren't giving them for cash. So there was some, you know, there there would be, you know, some some equity. But let's just say it's a hundred thousand dollars. Just keep the numbers easy, and we give them uh, the ability to get into this property at a good price, and uh, that there would be a debt, and they'd be, you know, running their own duplex. They own it. Nobody took us up on that. What are you crazy? And so. Because uh, I would have jumped on that in a heartbeat, right? Uh, being in that thing. And so that's when I learned, okay, people are different, right? And so this really uh, kind of speaks to me on, on how people can be uh, pretty different from each other. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing, actually. Uh, it allows uh, uh, people to trade and specialize in what they're good at and that sort of thing. So here's the thing. Um, on this sheet here, which they flip flop the S and the C. Um, dominant through survey data, they found that 10% of the population, about 10% is in the D category. And in the I category, it's about 25%. And then 40% here in the steady, I gotta switch this around. 40% here in the steady and 25% in the uh, compliant. So that is kind of the way annual data uh, looks like. And so here's our class. Do we follow the general public? 
No, right? Look at the dots. We've got quite a few in the Ds. Um, this, this class will probably be closer, but here we have, we have one person in the C category. Um, and same thing up here, well, we have three. So this, this, is, this is a little closer to reality than, than what I've seen before, but we're not following it quite right. Um, why would that be that undergraduate students at Ottawa University, that's who I just polled, right? That's, that was my sample. Why wouldn't they be following perhaps national data on this? What do you think? Okay, so yeah, there's a commonality here. What, what's one commonality among undergraduate students at Ottawa University? Uh, I'm thinking of one other thing that makes you guys a little bit of a biased sample. Yeah. Debt? No. <laughs> so everyone in the athletes. 80% of the Ottawa University undergrads are student athletes. So what sort of mentality kind of is the athlete up here a lot of times? The driver, right? So a little bit more. So we usually have a little bit more people, if it's only 10% of the general population, we've got three here, we're looking at 30% or so of, of what we just sampled. And so we tend to be a little bit lopsided. And you guys, these the people who were the S's here seem to be pretty close to the D's. So I bet you had a lot of D's, and, and but you had a little more S's, right? So, um, so we're a little bit different than the general population because of our, our sampling. Uh, but this one wasn't wasn't terribly too far off, at least in terms of uh, numbers. Okay, um, so the next thing I want you to do is to put down the name of somebody in your life that relates to each one of those. I think you all have people you know that are in each category. For me, my mentor in real estate and all my business ventures was Ev Senior, Ev Everett Cochran Senior. Um, and so he was definitely bull in a china cabinet uh, type of guy, great guy. Uh, my business partner, CPA uh, business partner, he would be more on the client side. He did all the books and accounting and stuff. Again, great guy. Uh, my friend Tracy, she's always wanting to kind of, oh, everything's okay. Are you doing all right? And, and it's kind of steady and, and wanting to be amiable. Uh, oh, whatever you want to do is fine. And then my brother, Chad. This is my brother who was always, he's the youngest and he was always the one instigating crap, right? He still does it today. He's 47 years old and he's still point poking people, right? To kind of instigate things. So he's definitely the influencer. He owns his own business now doing credit repair, um, which we might uh, have him come to speak to the class uh, in different times. So maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do something like that. So everybody put somebody in their life and you can just use first name. I just want you kind of explicitly thinking about these details and put the person in your life that would uh, belong in those categories. On that paper? On that paper, yeah. Go ahead and put it on that paper that you've got. Yep, just put a first name. It's just to really kind of get you thinking about the differences people have. And oh, that's important. All right, so Julio, what was your what was your area? What were you, a D or an I? Which category? Go ahead and unmute yourself. I was between a D and an I. Between the D and the I, okay. And then what did you find on the career side? What do you want to be when you grow up? Which career was the best match for you? Probably. So you didn't do this part is what you're telling me by your long, you got to follow along when you're on Zoom. You got to be doing the exercise just like everybody else. You talking about where it says like entrepreneur, writer, and business owner and all that stuff? Yeah, just the, those are the list of careers that oh, yeah, I was gonna say, streets tend to have. I was going to say business owner. 
and you could be, you know, you could be down here too with the on the S and the C. If you found these are more appealing to you, this thing isn't perfect. It's just a suggestion on where people might be. So Julio, you look at that over. I'm going to come back to you. Uh, what number okay. were we five? And that was F. One, two, three, four, five. Josh. Yeah. What job were you? What do, what do you want to do, I guess, first? What's your thing you want to do? Sports field, like doing physical therapy or business? <laughs> All right. And so where is that? Did you find that on this list here? So medical related, nurse, general duty, uh, business owner, business. Which one do you think best match? I, don't, I haven't gone through all these. That's why I wanted you guys to kind of go through carefully and see, is there one that's the closest match to what you want to do? And you were what, DI? You were I, so you were up here. Okay, and so representative, there is some sales administrator. You know, they say healthcare, but it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, sales agent. So that's uh, kind of what we're looking for. One, two, three, four, five. Kevin. Uh, I had, I was more S and I, but I saw. What did you want to really do, or what do you have to do? Advertising. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's an I. So it's okay. It's like on the edge between both S. But you were actually more S and I, but you yeah. had uh, that. Okay. All right. So this just kind of helps us think through some things. Um, again, there might be, and it's totally understandable, sports related something or other, right? But as you progress to your senior year. We want to narrow that down, and hopefully this type of thing and thinking about your own personality and, and uh, where that might be to fit and play to your strengths, you can start making decisions your sophomore year on potentially major or minors so that you, and do I have a senior then? I think I maybe have one. Does anybody see me? Sometimes I have seniors, but by the time you get to that senior year and you're like, oh, that's great. I wish I would have known that uh, instead of being an accountant, I could have been, you know, in sales. And now you've got all that, you're kind of in that track. We'll talk about, you know, what, what that means and what the implications, but now if you really start noodling this stuff a little bit, and that's what this chapter is going to help you do, um, you might start to make some shifts or decisions on adding or complementing uh, to your degree program. All right, questions or comments? All right, that's a wrap. Oh, uh, I did want to announce the homework. I'm going to have you guys watch. It's just a video homework. So I want you to watch the next video section on your own. I put it in Buzz as a due date. Uh, but so watch video section number three uh, on your own tonight. We'll start with number four tomorrow.